Hello, it's Wendy again. Today I'm going to use some watercolor to do some embellishment on this these book pages. This is the altered book that I've been working on. Got quite a bit done. Well, okay, not that much done, but it's going to be a long process anyway, so not to worry. I have tried using watercolor on this paper, which is quite a funny paper. It's very soft and it's very absorbent and it actually looks nice when I do this so I thought what I would do is um, just because this takes a little while to dry and because I'm also doing it on the back of a page that has paper glued to it I don't want it to be too wet so I'm going to make stripes that will go with the other elements that are going to go on the page that I've kind of figured out and I will show you what I'm going to be using these are my watercolors and my theme for these pages is is incorporating yellow so I'm going to be using um, this yellow I think because I want it to be fairly bright so I just wet my brush there is a little bit of something else in here which we'll get rid of and then I'm going to make a puddle of it over here so that I've got lots to work with and this is one thing that you want to do, you just you, you uh, create a puddle of the paint that you want to work with in, in the consistency that you want. So that is if you want it to be pale or bright or intense or thin, then you can, you can choose, you know, this is where you want to decide that. Now I'm just going to use this to practice on. That's fairly intense although I do love the color so I'm going to add more water to it so that it thins down a little bit more and by doing that I'm just gonna drop it in here that way my puddle is more diluted and when it dries it'll be thinner and not quite as intense make some space here which is always a bit of a challenge so I did think of putting just a swash across here, but I don't want it to be too wet and I don't want it to take take too long to dry. And then I thought, well, why don't I just do some stripes? So these are going to be just really random, like not measured or anything. I like the diagonal. And you can see how here the, um, the paint is more diluted got a little bit too much on it. So I'm picking it up and using it over here because I don't want it to take too long to dry. And if you don't have a lot of paint in your brush but it's damp it will pick up paint. So I'm just going to run this back along here and see if I can pick up quite a bit of that. Don't want too much on any of them. And I'm just eyeballing this. I'm just kind of guessing. Uh, and the way that I'm doing that is at this end, I'm kind of going, okay, how far was it from the one before it? Better take this up just a little bit farther. And then over here we're going to do the same thing. How far is it from the one that went before it? And you'll see what this turns out like in a little bit. And this is basically a new idea for me. I just kind of came up with it this afternoon. It is afternoon where I am and the sun is streaming in the windows which is absolutely fabulous because we've had a lot of dark and stormy days and nights and rain and you name it. Now I didn't bring this down to the bottom did I? So I think I will just go ahead and do that so that there's continuity. There! That's all there is to that. Oh, it'll take a little while for that to dry, even though there isn't really a lot of water in it, but the, where the brush picks up, um, you, you end up with a little bit more. But I just took the water, the paint out of my brush, and now it's just damp. 
and I can go in here and just pick up that water so that it doesn't really puddle there. However, I'm going to just leave that for the moment. That's all the painting we need to do right now. And, and I will leave this open and just let it dry. So the moisture will evaporate out of it, and then I'll have quite an intense yellow here that I can use at another time, which is why I don't clean off my whole palette, because otherwise, basically, you're wasting paint. And nobody wants to do that, because, you know, watercolors are not inexpensive, and if you paint a lot, you can go through a lot of them. Now, I found this page in this little book, Edith Holden's con The Country Diary of a... Of a Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady birthday book, which um, I found it was in my mother in law's things, and she uh, passed away several years ago. And so it's got it's a it's a birthday book, and it has dates and everything. Plus, it has famous people's birthdays and whatnot. But it also has full page illustrations like this. And my husband said it had it had had no nostalgic feeling for him because he doesn't like this kind of stuff that much so I was free to use it for which I'm really glad I have also found a couple of others by her um, and I, I love the artwork and who doesn't really so what I'm going to do now is take this page and make it into a page that flips out um, along here the question is do I want to fold it or do I want to cut it? And I think I'm just going to fold it. So that means I don't need the cutter. However, I do need the scoring board because then I can fold it nice and straight. And, why did I put that away? And I want it to, to be inside the edge of this. So I need to fold it probably right there, which will give me lots of, um, lots of fold over. I got this um, this We Are scoreboard a little while ago, and I really like it. It's um, so quick and easy to use. I've put a link for it below if you're interested in getting one. I did look quite a bit, and I, I asked in one of the Facebook groups for recommendations and whether I should even bother buying one. And the consensus was, of course you should buy one, so, you know, so I did, and I'm really glad that I did, because it's really useful. So now what I want to do is fold that piece in like that, and I'm going to glue it along there. I'm going to put this out of, out of sight again. I will be using it again in a few minutes for something completely different. So we'll just leave that there. And, you know, even like this, this looks pretty, doesn't it? However, we're not leaving it like that. So I, I think I'll put this probably kind of centered here. And the question is, which glue to use? Because they do perform differently. And, um... Well, I think I'm going to use this one. This is Aline's Tacky Glue. And um, and it does quite well if the paper's not too glossy, I found, because on the cover of the other journal that I've been working on, uh, it's, it just didn't stick very well on the really, really shiny, glossy paper. It's like plastic covered or whatever they do for, for um, packaging. But on everything else, it's pretty good and I would recommend it. And what I did was I took it, um, I got the big bottle like this and I took it and put it in this little one and I just bought these little bottles at the dollar store for a buck, which makes them a lot easier to handle and have, has a sharper nozzle. So I'm going to put this here, just kind of eyeball it. Lay it down. It must be spring. Somehow a fly has gotten in the house and is buzzing around my window. That's rather annoying. Flies. I wonder what their purpose in life is. I guess it's to feed the spiders and the birds. There! 
that makes kind of a nice little edge. And then we've got, it's almost like a little booklet here coming over. Now the painted side of this is already dry. So what I'm going to do with this is I have, uh, I have a card and this is um, one that I, I used to sell these. I had a wholesale business for a while. Everything had my own design on it. And then 2008 came along and the crash and the gift store companies went out of business right, left and center and so did retail stores. And anyway, I eventually got out of doing that, but I have this and I think it's a really super message and and it's um, a great journal card. And it's it's called the Serenity, the Serenity Collection. Serenity Collection by me. So I'm going to put it here However, I'm not going to just stick it on there. I'm going to make an envelope for it. And to do that, I've got this paper and I've got my scoring board, which has this very handy measurement tool for envelopes. So what you do is First of all, you cut your paper, you, you look at the measurement of your card. So mine's actually four by five, not four by five and a half, but I don't mind having a little bit of a quarter of an inch on each end just to make it really easy to put the card in and out. That way it doesn't, it's not going to um, have any tension on it so it won't pull the glue off or anything like that. So we're going to go with this. What I need then is a piece of paper um, seven and seven eighths inches square. So that's the first thing I'll do is cut this paper and make it seven and seven eighths inches square. So um, let me see, there's seven, seven and a half, seven and three quarters, and another eighth. And this is a 12 by 12 sheet of scrapbooking paper. And then I'll just turn it this way and do the same thing. So seven, uh, just like that. I've got some pieces left over for my scrap bin. Yeah, we're done with that one. This one is a little bit tricky. It took me a while to figure this out. I actually had to look it up and see how, what? It's like, how on earth does this work? So I'm doing them at three and seven eighths, these lines. Okay. Now I fold them with that new line. Actually, I'm going to fold it this way first. This one isn't even very deep. Come on, let's... I think I was a little too tentative with the fold. So, there we go. Same here, it's a little bit too, too wimpy. Okay, there's that one. And this one. I'm going to have to correct that on this little thing here because it didn't work out right. Now, I'll just take these and cut this little corner off. Ostensibly, I've I think I've only made one one or two of these before. I haven't had this this um, unit for very long. So we cut those corners. Come on, behave. Do you ever talk to your paper? Talk to your project. Hmm. 
Okay, let's see. Let's see if this will work. Okay, so this should go in, this should go in, this should go in. It's too bad we've got those extra folds, but um, perhaps they look... Perhaps they look okay. Now, where's my card? Well, it will go in, won't it? I'm curious about this because what are the actual measurements on this? It's supposed to be four by five or four by five and a half. That's five and one eighth and five and one eighth basically. So it came out square for some reason. Anyway, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna quibble about it because what would be the point? Okay, so I'm going to fold these. I'll just move this off the scene here. And I'm going to just glue this down. Just put a little dab of glue there. And then along here so that it stays in place. Like that. And here's the, our, our envelope. The sizing, I'm not entirely sure of. However, I think it, I think it works anyway. As long as it fits on my page, that is another question. So let's see what we've got here. I wanted to put it this way but I think it's going to work better this way. So then it will close over the card and we've got this nice background and then I'm going to add a few other embellishments. So to begin with, um, maybe I'll use the glue stick on this one. Um, where's my, here we go. Let's just get these really nice and flat. And then they won't puff the book up anymore because it's already getting quite fat and I've taken dozens of pages out of it. But it's just totally fun to do. I think that extra fold actually is kind of appealing. We're gonna we're gonna decide that anyway. And I've picked out some other things here with some yellows in them. Uh, yeah, that one I guess is yellow. That would work with this. What do you think about that? No, I don't want that. That's too fussy. And this one is, I think, I think maybe too big. There's another decoration. Be nice to tuck this in though, to have a place to tuck it. So maybe if I put this flower this way and put this right here, then that would tuck in. That means just putting, leaving a space in here. So I think I will do that right now. Let's get my parchment out here um, and use this. Now there's a little piece of paper in here. There we go. Um, okay, I want this part to be free. All right, everything else I want to be really seriously glued down and even to about there. So this is going to go under it. That means it has to go in about like that. That is very pretty, very, very pretty. Okay, so now this one has to go on here and we will do the same here with, with the um, parchment and this glue stick. I want it to go right to the edges. I could use the um, 
tacky glue but I want it to be all over and that would require me to kind of spread it around Come on. and uh, and then it gets wet and it it will buckle the pages underneath and stuff like that so let's just put this actually let's put this here might as well make it even with the other one And that gives me a space to put something up here should I cho choose to do that, which I just might. Now on this page, do I want that there? It's not really the color family that I want, but I sure do like this one. However, it's too big and I'm going to have to look a little bit more, but this, this goes in here and I think it's a really good reminder to just breathe. We also have the bees in these little um, wax seals and they're kind of gold yellow however before I get to that let's finish this one now this page I'm going to leave just as it is and there's little spaces to write in here if you want or you can just read these things because she's she's like I went to a little spinny to see a large bush of the great round leaf willow, which is a perfect picture just now, covered all over with great golden catkins that light up the copse like hundreds of little fairy lamps. Just is so evocative and just so gorgeous. And this is the he chapter header for part two of the book, but I really like this paper, so I think I'll put this here, and then the rest of it will just be blank. This one? Uh, I think it's too orange. I want this bright yellow. I just, I really like it. So, let's make sure we don't have any goofy spots on here. I think we're okay. And then again. So, sorry about, um, I had a little emergency to take care of, and I'm back. So, I just wanted to show you what I've done here. The uh, emergency happened when this glue, the glue on this was wet, so I quickly had to put it on there. And then I realized that when I opened this up it just showed which wasn't what I wanted to happen to have happen so I solved the problem by using my one and one and a half inch punch and just making this so that this shows and it looks really pretty and then I went around it with distress ink and just distressed the edges so that it stands out more from the back so here are our finished pages. This side, of course, we've got the, this pretty card for journaling on, which slips into the envelope that we made. It's supposed to slip, there we go. And then this will tuck underneath the rose. I added the butterfly to pull these colors together. So we've got these colors and and even some green in this and yellow and it just all coordinates. This is a page out of uh, Edith Holden's book. Uh, it's actually a birthday book but it fit beautifully and there's room to make notes here on all these little spaces plus lots of room to journal here. So that's our project for today. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you'll take some ideas from it and have fun with it and I'll see you next time.